Hello guys, grab yourself a cup of tea and a cookie if you have one. We have so much to get through. So we're going to get right into it. How did you get into stripping? Very, very, very simple. Probably simpler than any other job that you could ever apply for. You call the club, email the club, DM the club on Instagram, say, hey, are you guys hiring? If so, may I come in for a trial shift? And they'll say, most of the time, yes. Do you have a photo of yourself? Come in for a trial. What makes good management in a strip club? In my opinion, professionalism is number one. You want a management that treats you how you would want to be treated and how you treat them. Just respect for everyone. Number two is low to no fines or fees. So when I talk to people who have not worked in strip clubs, it blows their mind that we have to pay to work and we have to give a lot of our money to the strip club. So a lot of the money that is earned from doing lap dances goes to the club as well. As well as you want flexibility with shifts because we are a sole trader, independent contractors should not really have to be told when and for how long they have to work. We're not getting paid to be there. So you want somewhere that is flexible um, and we'll let you work one day a week if you want. We'll let you take time off if you want because they're not paying you to be there. Will I strip in a duo again? I will definitely hustle with other girls, but I will not work with one person solely from start to finish. What are my thoughts on OnlyFans? Oh, I know that there is so much going on in this space at the moment with regards to them saying that they would no longer do explicit content. And then recently I read that they're actually going back on it and being like, no, sorry about it. We actually apologize to everyone. We sort of made ourselves big because of the explicit content and those creators. So we're not gonna be doing that. So I'm like, oh, well, that's great. Um, but a lot of people are like, oh, you know, there's no coming back from what they did. It's too much of an inconvenience for me to move platforms now that seemingly I can continue to post my explicit content on there. So for the moment, I'm just gonna be maintaining with that. Sugar Daddy advice, please. I'm going to do a video on this. There is way too much to say. Story times, my expectations, do's and don'ts, profiles, where to go about meeting one. I'm gonna do a separate video on this because we're gonna be here all day. <laughs> where do I wanna go to work, to strip, when the borders open. So I would love to go back to Sydney and work at Sefton Playhouse. I absolutely love it there. And of course, go to Melbourne. Would love to work there as well. And pretty much everywhere. Love to go to Adelaide. Love to go to the Northern Territory, Perth and Tasmania. So pretty much everywhere, everywhere. Do we have a wedding date? We do have a wedding date. The date is May 15th, which is actually the day that we got engaged. So that's a really special day for us. It's also the day perfectly in between Leo and my birthdays. We don't actually have a year. It will probably be maybe two, between two and four years away um, because ideally we want to go overseas and yeah, it's just not something where prioritizing right now. How did Leo and I meet? We met in the strip club and he came in as a patron. Did you know Leo was the one right away? Um, definitely not right away, but probably within like the second time or third time meeting him. What does Leo do? So Leo is also a stripper and he also does work a day job in property. How long were we together before he proposed? So we got together in August of 2020 and we moved in together in December of 2020 and we got engaged on May 15th, 2021. Do you get jealous of each other? A really common question, he does not get jealous and I do not get jealous of him. We are very much of the mindset that work is work. We know what it's like because we're both in the industry and yeah, we're not spending time with all these random people for, for fun. It's our job. It's not something that concerns us. And another question, how is Leo okay with you being a stripper? Well, he's okay with it because it's my job. To be honest, I wouldn't be with somebody who wasn't okay with what I do for work. And I, I personally don't believe in putting the insecurities of other people above my own goals. How tall am I? I am 170 centimeters tall. Someone asked what type of birth control am I on? I have been taking the OCP, the oral contraceptive pill for about nine years. I recently stopped about a month ago and had the Marina inserted, which is an IUD. I had a bit of a traumatic experience having it inserted. It was super duper painful. Blood pressure got really low, bled a lot, a lot of pain, threw up, very dramatic. Since it sort of settled down and it's really good not having to take the pill every day and I sort of take comfort in the fact that I'm not ingesting so much hormones. Next question, do I want children? I adore babies, love babies, think they are just. However, I 
have always said that I don't want children. Want a large family, yes, but don't want my own children. I have always thought that if I ever were to have children, I would foster or adopt them. Pregnancy kind of gives me the ick. In the next 10 years, I will not be having any children, but I am super keen on fostering babies, especially just here and there. My favorite movie is definitely Legally Blonde or The Great Gatsby. Dream holiday destination. I would really love to do an Antarctic expedition. I think that would just be so fun. What will the wedding look like? So picture the Twilight Wedding in Forks, Washington. Very foresty, wet, green, natural looking. Love that. Almost like bohemian, but my dress will be quite glamorous. I will insert a snippet of my Pinterest board. Feel free to follow it. <laughs> Am I in an open relationship? No, I am not. Do I struggle with body image or feel I am too fat to work as a dancer? I don't know if this person is calling me fat, but <laughs> I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I struggle with body image. I want to be healthy and fit and work out and be strong. And I don't think too much about what I eat. I think balance is super important and food is something so important to me. I get so much joy out of cooking and eating and dining out with others. It's just something that I really value. I guess I'm sort of insecure about my sort of midsection because I did gymnastics for pretty much the first 10 to 15 years of my life. I never really developed properly. I think, well, this is what my mom told me anyway, and she's a scientist, so... I never really got a hip to waist ratio. I was built straight up and down like a boy and um, I really don't have that sort of womanly figure. I'm quite tall and just really quite boxy. But yeah, I am quite self-conscious of my midsection. It's really masculine, I guess. So that's why I always try to wear things that accentuate the waist. So I always wear suspenders when I wear lingerie, etc. Now I think 99% of you have come to this video to hear me answer this specific question. It is just the absolute tea that's going on at the moment even though i have addressed this on tiktok briefly and on instagram briefly and on twitch i will address it here because still so many people are asking me about it I, i'm not going to make a whole video on it because there is quite literally two minutes worth of things to say about it but the questions are along the lines of what happened to Poppy? Where is Poppy? What happened to the YouTube? What happened to the drone only fans? Why are you guys not working together? What happened to the duo? I also want to respect her privacy. And I think that we sort of owe it to you guys in a way because we are so open with our lives to not just completely like sweep it under the rug. Like I know when um, my favorite YouTubers and things like have a falling out or break up or whatever, like you want to know, like you, you know, you're invested in their lives and, and you feel like you know them. And so that is why I feel the need to talk about this. I'm not talking about it because um, I want to stir up drama, not at all. I'm very much moved past it. And I just want to quickly address it to let you guys know what's happening. A lot of people are still under the impression that the channel is active and we will be working together in the future, which is not the case. Basically what happened was about a month ago now, I got a text message from Poppy completely out of the blue, um, sort of a paragraph saying that um, she no longer wants to work with me in any capacity. So she no longer wants to do YouTube with me. She no longer wants to do joint OnlyFans or work together. So strip together, which we have done for years. And keeping in mind, we've been friends for 10 years and really never had a fight or a falling out or anything like that. I talked to her every single day. We would see each other most days. We were really like so incredibly close. We didn't have that many other good friends. It was really just sort of her and I for a really long time. And of course we entered the industry pretty much together and we've always really worked together. Started the YouTube channel, uh, which was Poppy's idea. And also the OnlyFans, which we've had going for years now and registered a company together, had intentions and goals of opening a strip club together. Um, we actually went shopping for podcast equipment three or four days prior to her sending me this message and filmed an introduction episode of the podcast and everything in my mind was normal, fine, quite literally could not have ever anticipated anything like this. To say it was a surprise or a shock was an absolute understatement. So I got this text message that said she didn't want to work with me at all in any avenue of our business, which is kind of a big deal because one, it's been a really long time. Two, we have so many different avenues and it's our work. We generate a significant income from our different avenues of work together. 
and it's also a lot of time and effort. I felt completely let on, completely in the dark and um, really betrayed to be honest. She had never had a conversation with me about this before. I was so incredibly upset for about two or three days. I had just lost probably one of the most important people in my life and a lot of people are saying well oh, okay she doesn't want to work with you why can't you just be friends and I, I kind of get that. She implied that I was the reason for her mental health issues. That's the reason that she didn't want to work with me. I don't think that it's ever appropriate or it's ever fair to blame other people for uh, your mental health issues. I think that I was a very good friend to her and I honestly don't regret anything at all. I think that I couldn't have done anything better. I feel like I always supported her and yeah, I think that I was a really good friend to her. I don't want to be friends with somebody who blames other people for their misadventure. Following on from that is what happened with the vault. So for those who don't know, The Vault is a strip club in Toowoomba that I have worked at for about a year. So Poppy and I worked there together. We went out there together and we worked there pretty much every single weekend since we started. So about a year we've been there, which is a long time in the stripper world. And we really loved it. The management was fantastic. The earning potential when we started was fantastic. We had some really old vlogs and TikToks where we would make, you know, $2,000 a night each. So it was really good. And it was female-led management. Really loved it. Especially a girl called Mandy. We absolutely adored her. She was just the best. And in the last couple of months, uh, new management has taken over and the place has sort of crumbled. There are significant lack of staff, uh, controllers in particular, meaning that dancers are not able to make money because they're not able to get bookings because there are no staff. So the strip club is not able to provide what they have to provide in order for the girls to make money. One of the last nights that I worked, I sold a couple of thousand dollar booking to a group of guys in a bucks party. And we went up to the register and they were like, nope, can't do it. Sorry, we don't have staff. And so those guys left immediately. And instead of making a couple thousand dollars that night, I went home with like a hundred dollars. After traveling a three hour round trip out to Toowoomba to work there, sometimes paying $300 for a hotel to work out there. And I can't make money, not because of me doing my job, but because the club isn't able to facilitate that. So I had a lot of loyalty to that club. That club was my club. This new, she's not a new manager, but she's new to this role. Her and Poppy always got along. She was her biggest fan. The weekend before this all happened, we worked and there was an incident with a patron who was not able to have a booking. Again, it's that same issue. There were no controllers to get that booking. So he kicked up a stink and was like, well, I should have a refund. You should give me bookings like for a discount because you are so clearly understaffed and it's not my fault. And he turned around and like started yelling and abusing me. I got really upset, mentioned it to a controller who basically flipped the whole thing and said, I was the reason he reacted that way. I'm the problem and that this particular person is gonna get in trouble with the owners because of me. Someone get me a new SD card, please. To continue, basically, it became a very unprofessional workplace. I was, you know, willing to just put it all aside and be like, hey, like, can we get more controllers? Can we like fix it? Because it used to be so damn good. It used to be the best club I'd ever worked at and it just didn't resolve. And it was like this for months. And it was sort of just the turning point that this other person within the management team had victim blamed me for the actions of a patron because they were more concerned about the owner asking them questions than the safety and well-being of one of their dancers. I said to Poppy that night, I said, I'm not, I'm not coming back, I don't think. Everything was, you know, normal between Poppy and I at this point. Carried on with our podcast plans and just sort of said, well, we need to probably look for some different places to work. So that was on Saturday night. And then Wednesday was the day that I got the message from Poppy. And then less than 24 hours after that, I got a message from the staff phone saying, you're on a three month suspension. I was like, what the fuck? Couldn't think of anything that I had done that could be misconstrued as doing something wrong. So I was completely surprised by this. I replied to the staff phone and was like, hey, can you please tell me why? And I didn't get a response. I then messaged the new, um, this particular manager directly. So when I say new manager, she's not a new manager, but she's new to this role. But she left me on red and I had um, sent basically a whole recount of the incidents that happened on Saturday night with that man and then the other person of management team blaming me, who was also brand new. And she left me on red. 
very professional. I felt like I wasn't left with any other choice but to contact the owner who I know quite well and basically sent him an email being like, hey, this is what happened. This is what's been going on with the lack of staff and sort of the inability of this new manager to carry out their role. I was wondering if you could let me in on why I was suspended. I then hear that Poppy mentioned on her live stream that she knew why I was suspended. And so I contacted Poppy and was like, hey, apparently you know why I'm suspended. She said, yes, I know why you're suspended. The manager told me. Again, why would she not? She's incredibly unprofessional. She was telling anyone and everyone who asked my business why I was suspended. And I didn't even know because I wasn't told. But the reason apparently that this manager gave Poppy was that uh, she didn't like my attitude. So it sounds like you just don't like me for whatever reason, potentially the poppy issue, I don't know. It is a very uh, convenient time period that this happened with Poppy and then the manager who she is so incredibly close with decides to fire me the next day for no reason, no conversation. And then it's bitching about me to the rest of the staff. It's just so untidy. And I'm so glad to be out of that incredibly toxic and hostile work environment. Um, but it is such a shame that things had to go down like that. And it's such a shame that people like this are in positions of power within management when they clearly are not able to professionally conduct themselves. Very political. I'm so damn glad to not have to drive all the way out there to make no money, to work in clubs that are adequately staffed with professional members of management. It's just an absolute breath of fresh air. How has your mental health been since the drama and rumors spread about you? Hmm. At the time, it was pretty rough, but I feel so much better than I did before this all happened. I'm in such a better headspace. Am I making more or less without Poppy? More. Do I make much from YouTube? At the moment, I make zero dollars from YouTube because I had to start from scratch. I had to make my own channel and start from scratch. I started my own channel because I adore YouTube. It's a really fun hobby for me. I'm learning new skills, learning how to edit videos, and I really, really love the community of you guys and engaging with you. And yeah, I've literally learned so much and I absolutely love the social media, particularly YouTube. So I really was so upset that that was going away. And I was like, oh, I've worked so hard for this. I'm not making any money, but I was recently just approved for monetization. So hopefully I might start to make a little bit of something from YouTube, which would be really nice. I'm at my absolute wits end with my camera. And so I'm just gonna continue on my phone. Hopefully the quality isn't too bad. Where was I? My streams of income. So I work at the clinic between one to three days a week. I am doing my PhD full time and in Australia you get a stipend so you make um, kind of like a salary I guess um, for doing that for living expenses etc. I have an income from OnlyFans and also from stripping as well as some dividends from investing. I actually got this next question quite a lot. What on earth is my sleep cycle? Because as some of you might have caught on I am awake until 5 or 6 a.m. Saturdays and Sundays yet. I begin work at university at 8 a.m. on Monday. I only ever work at the moment at the strip club on Fridays and Saturdays. So I sleep all day Saturday after working Friday night. And then I work on Saturday night feeling super refreshed. However, by the time I'm finished working, it's 5 a.m., I'm ready to crash. So I go to sleep and I only allow myself to sleep for six hours on Sunday, what I could sleep for 12. And so that way I have half Sunday left, a bit tired, sure, but I have half of Sunday left to get my life sorted, do my washing, do my groceries, prep my meals for the week, do life admin things, plan uni for the week, etc. And then by the time I've done that for a couple of hours, I then am ready for sleep at 8 p.m. Wake up at six and have my normal sleep cycle routine throughout the week. And that's worked for me for a long time. What are my favorite snacks? I love chips, Smith's crinkle cut original, chips like potato chips and I really love Red Rock Deli the chili ones they're delicious and I do just love like cheese and crackers and like chocolate I'm a big chocolate girl best hair extensions definitely Zala hair extensions so I only wear clip-ins and also a clip-in ponytail love them how long have I been vegetarian I've been vegetarian for about a decade I would say I do eat fish though so I'm a pescatarian Someone said, how much do I spend on eating out? I seem to eat out a lot. You are correct. I do eat out probably more than the average person, I would say. I was talking to Leo about this, that some people, you know, value going out to the valley and spending their money on drinks and having a good time clubbing. That's amazing. 
Some people save and save and save and then spend all their money on holidays. Something for us that we really value is dining out. We love the social aspect. We love nice food. We love trying lots of different restaurants. And I just really love like a date night. Like I love going out to eat. It's something that I really enjoy. So yeah, I probably do spend a lot of money compared to some people on eating out. I would say we probably go out at least once a week, but no more than three or four times a week. So anywhere from, I guess, $150 to... $600 we would spend eating out. What are my holy grail makeup items? I really love the Kat Von D liquid eyeliner in brown. I really love the Tarte lipstick in Bear Bud. I'm actually wearing it now. It's kind of faded off because I'm drinking my tea. And above all, my fake lashes by Holy Grail. They're so fluffy and amazing and beautiful and I love them so much. I do have a discount code, it's in the link in the description. What is my day job? So I work in private practice ophthalmology specializing in the retina. So I basically assist the doctor, the eye doctor, in doing all of his diagnostic imaging. So things like OCTs, fluorescein angiograms, A scans, visual field tests, visual acuity, pupillary defects, administer eye drops. We can assist in surgery. So yeah, it's like a nice big range, yet being very specific to the retina. Could not have a better job at this point in my life. How do I manage my workload and time management? So. I'm currently on my third degree. I really struggled in the first year of my undergrad because of the workload. I was living at college and I was like really in with like the, the social scene and like the going out four times a week and it was just not maintainable. I had to learn the hard way about time management. I plan what absolutely has to be done. And in order to know what that is, you have to know where your priorities lie. So for me, it's always been education number one, more than work, more than literally anything else. All your assignments in date order. And then two weeks before that, I would say you have to have them finished by. And then a week before that, I would say you have to have it submitted by. And that's just what worked for me that's not um, feasible for a lot of people but it was what was really important to me and I was really driven I was really driven to do well a superiority complex I always had more than one job since I was 17 everything would come second to study so I would study all day all night to get everything done that I needed to get done and then I loved going out and I loved partying back in the day not anymore um, so I would go out, you know, Wednesday and Sunday, and then I worked in a bar on Friday and Saturday, as well as in a hotel during the day. So my sleep cycle back in the day was not very good, but my time management pretty much after first year was on point because I knew what I wanted and I wanted to do well. And I also had to eat. So I did have to work and I had to factor that in. It's so easy to be like, oh yeah, like you're just studying, but like, my god my undergraduate degree was the hardest thing i've ever done and i i say that all the time and i think i had like 45 contact hours one week and we would go into uni and have classes and have treats on saturdays it was intense but it it was what i needed actually it was like the slap in the face that was like pull your head in stop just cruising through life you need to work hard to achieve what you want to achieve so it was a blessing in disguise. Sorry, i went off on a mad tangent then I write everything out have a calendar have it on your phone have it on on your pantry, just, I have calendars everywhere and everything is mapped out. And like consistency is key. I work every Friday and Saturday in the club. I work at the clinic every Tuesday and then every second Thursday and Friday. Just consistency is key. How is my PhD going? Love it. It's the best. I might actually do a separate PhD video just because I know a lot of people could not care less. Let me know if you guys want me to like talk about what I'm doing and why is it important. Do I worry colleagues will find out that I strip? Or do I think stripping will impact my professional career? This is a very common question. Way early on, I didn't want anyone to know. I wasn't embarrassed by it, but I was very cautious about people's opinions of the industry. I didn't want to have to justify myself and my choices to other people who had no idea about the industry. So I kept it quiet, but then I was like, create like a little platform and like a resource for people like me back in the day in like 2016 being like, stripper vlog Australia and nothing came up. There was no information about strip clubs in Australia, strippers in Australia, the working, the industry, quite literally didn't know anything. I couldn't find any information about anything until I actually went to my trial shift. Me, six years ago, doing this for you. <laughs> if someone says to you like, you can't work here if you do that in your free time. Like a lot of people like teachers, they're like, I work with kids, I can't be a stripper. That is not true consult with a lawyer because what you do in your free time is nobody's business as long as you're not clicking drugs or doing anything illegal. I have got a lot of questions on finances and investing so I might again do another video on those. And that is the end of our Q&A. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.